everyone, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler. And today we're gonna to close out our little series on solving word problems using algebra. If you hadn't had a chance to check out the first two parts of the series, go ahead and do so. But if you have, let's go ahead and continue with closing out the series. We have an example that says, Sandy and Joey are participating in a walkathon at the local track to raise money. Sandy can walk around the track in six minutes. Joey can walk around the track in 4.5 minutes. Sandy and Joey started walking at the same time. How many minutes will it be until they complete a lap at the same time? And so this is a, a word problem where really, I don't necessarily need algebra to solve. I really need to use more of logic and kind of talk it out and kind of visualize what's happening. So with this example, we kind of visualize that we have two people who are walking around a track. They start at the same time. They're going at different paces, but at some point they're going to cross the finish line of the lap at the same time. And so to kind of visually represent what's happening, take a look at this diagram. It's not necessarily the greatest, but it gives you some idea of what's happening. So we have these two people. They're going in laps at different times. They're doing different laps, but at some point they're going to finish at the same time. So really what we're looking at is multiples and looking at multiples of two different numbers. And so we can kind of visualize this and solve it using a chart. And so let's create our chart. We have Sandy and Joey and we have different laps and we're gonna fill it out with, with basically how much time or how many minutes have elapsed after each lap. And we're gonna look for when the two values are the same. You know, it may not necessarily be on the same lap, but the numbers are going to be the same because that's the number of minutes when they're completing a lap. So after one lap, we have six and four and a half. After two laps, it's going to take Sandy 12 minutes because six plus six. And then Joey, it's going to take nine minutes. And then we're going to keep going. After three laps, it's 18 and 13 and a half. After four laps, it's 24 and 18 minutes. After five laps, it's 30 minutes and 22 and a half minutes. And we can continue on, you know, really forever, but we're gonna stop here because we wanna look for the rows. We wanna look for when the number of minutes in one of Sandy's laps equals the number of minutes in one of Joey's laps. And I can see that there's 18 minutes in both of their charts. You know, it took Sandy only three laps, you know, only completing three laps and Joey four laps, but they both finished at 18 minutes. So after how many minutes will they complete a lap at the same time? The answer is after 18 minutes. So I don't need to use any algebra. I can just kind of visualize it, talk it out, use a quick chart, and I can solve it. Let's look at one more example. A rental company carries tables that seat four, six, or nine people. For a wedding, a customer orders X tables that seat six people, Y tables that seat four people, and Z tables that seat nine people. Which expression represents the number of people who could be seated at the tables that the customer orders? So in this example, they actually give us four answer choices, which is pretty common on the GED. Many of your questions will have answer choices to choose from. And so in these situations, you know, you wanna find the right answer, but if you're unsure of how to solve it, one of the ways you can do it is by looking to eliminate some of your answer choices. When you're going through the GED math test, you really don't wanna leave any questions blank. Um, but if you do have to guess on a question or two, um, it's better to guess from you know two choices as opposed to four choices. So we're gonna use that idea to help kind of narrow down our choices. So let's kind of review this or look at it from a perspective of what if there was only one of each of the tables, you know, one table of four, one table of six, one table of nine. So we have these three tables and one seats four, one seats six, one seats nine. So if this was all the tables at the wedding, you know, how many total people would there be? Well, that's, that's easy. We would just add four plus six plus nine and then we get our total. So we're gonna use that same mindset to kind of eliminate a couple of our answer choices. Because we know we're adding three quantities we can el immediately eliminate answer A and answer C because those are multiplying three quantities together. So we've already cut our answer choices in half, which is great. 
Now, all we really need to do next is basically pair up the number of seats per table with the corresponding variable. Because whether there's one table of each, two tables of each, a mixture of tables, you're really taking that number, four, six, or nine, and multiplying it by the number of those tables that you have, and then adding that quantity together. So in our example, they said that the four-seater was set for Y tables, the six-seater was for X tables, and the nine-seater was for Z tables. So we need to find the answer choice that has four Y, six X, and nine Z. And when doing that, it ends up being answer choice D. So it's not really in the same order as the diagram, but remember that addition is commutative, which means that it doesn't really matter which order you place your numbers. If you're adding them together, you're always gonna get the same value. So I hope this helps when you get to some of the word problems. Remember, you don't always necessarily need to create an equation or an expression or solve one. It could just be a matter of taking the information you're given, visualizing what's happening in the problem, maybe drawing a diagram or drawing a quick chart and solving from there. Be on the lookout for more upcoming videos. And as always, thanks for watching. If you have any other questions or you need assistance and you live in the Palm Beach County area, visit our website at GEDS.com to find a location near you and sign up for classes.